Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Richard Ayuadi. In the news this week, following the explosion of his SpaceX rocket ship, Elon Musk attempts to reassure shareholders with his new range of state-of-the-art tumble dryers. Get your clothes dry, wouldn't yeah. you? <laughs> in Downing Street, suspicions continue to grow that one government insider may be taking secret bribes from pro EU groups. And on a train from Scotland, Keir Starmer realises it's going to be a long journey as he's stuck with a nutter saying how great things were in the old days. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a political commentator who says she's not a massive lefty, which, for the BBC, counts as balance. Please welcome <laughs> Marina Perkis. And on Paul's team tonight is a comedian who recently said that he hates being forced to take part in standing ovations. Trust me, if I get one at the end of the evening for what they've given me to read out, you won't be able to resist. Please welcome <laughs> Phil Wang. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Marina, have a look at this. Oh, it's a nightclub. Oh, there's Michael Gobe's new friends. <laughs> oh, no, it's a panic, isn't it? It's the alarm. It's the alarm. So, Marina, it's a security alert. It was, yeah, 3 p.m. on Sunday for some people. Right. Not for everyone, though. OK. Some people got it on Monday at, like, 2.30 a.m. <laughs> Why? Because the government, it was their plan. Are you suggesting they're not competent? <laughs> Apparently, only 40% of people received the alarm at the correct time. Apparently, there is a reason for it, and the Express have said it's uh, Meghan Markle's fault. <laughs> Yeah, I think I believe that. <laughs> I was very disappointed not to hear the alarm, but then I don't have a mobile phone. OK. <laughs> and I'm wondering what this alarm is for. It's got to be nuclear war, isn't it? So I won't know until I see this bright light on the horizon yeah. and a sudden rise in temperature. Yes, whereas otherwise you could have done something about it. Yeah, I could have done something about it. <laughs> Drawn the curtains. Yeah. <laughs> got underneath the table. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't work. The curtains is enough. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, well, this is the controversial emergency alarm that went off at 3 o'clock last Sunday, not for everyone. Three mobile customers didn't get the alarm. Uh, not many, is it? But uh, <laughs> they, didn't, they, they didn't get it. Um, who else was critical of the alarm system? Well, I think Jacob Rees-Mogg, because I think he wanted it done by semaphore from Hills. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I think he said... Um, uh, you will know this, because I gather you've had a bit of a... Oh, we're mates. Mm. You're yeah. mates? All oh, right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You've knocked over your ice bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and the champagne's gone flat. We <laughs> were keeping that cold for Jacob rees -Mogg. Yeah. We didn't talk about this. Oh, didn't you? No, we just talked about his complete failure um, as, a, as a person. Did he government. bring that subject up? Or was <laughs> that you? Funnily enough, it was me, okay. actually, yeah. But apparently he said it was an example of nanny state, which okay. is always funny, cos he's the only person who actually has a nanny. <laughs> Well, it was other Conservatives as well who were critical, um, including Greg Smith, MP for Buckingham, who said, I don't understand why we need to tell people they're in the middle of a disaster. <laughs> also, um, Wright said Fred, they weren't keen on the idea. Please tell me more. <laughs> Is it Richard? What's he called? Yeah, Richard I'm Richard. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, Richard. I'm right here. <laughs> the one that's called Richard, he's like a conspiracy theorist, and okay. he thought it was some sort of you know, intervention. It's not to do with 5G posts Possibly. turning us into lizards, is it? <laughs> Every chance. Good. Because <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> do you want to see the official Downing Street video telling people to expect the alarm? Yes, please. Yes. Um, you're going to have to guess what happens next. OK. It's thrilling. All right. Let's believe those people are working on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, what comes next? Put us out of our misery. Well, I'll is that what he says? We're putting you out of your misery. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> if you can't hear the alarm, you're already dead. <laughs> Shut up. Let's see what they actually went for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks a bit like theatre from a distance. You're yeah. getting theatre. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> I was looking for something to do. Yeah. He was told to turn off their phone in advance of the test. Surgeons, ideally. Yeah. You'd want them to be startled in the operating room. That's true. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Mr. Jones. Well, Mrs. Jones now. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> People who were philanderers, who were yes. cheating. Was there government advice for that? <laughs> Pe well, it was, uh, was people... Specifically to former prime ministers. Yes. <laughs> people who might want to keep a phone secret. And um, fans at football grounds, in case the noise put the players off. <laughs> <laughs> who could have done with an alarm this week, warning of imminent disaster? Diane Abbott? Yes. Mm. She sent a letter to the Observer in which she wrote that racism and prejudice were different things and implied that there was a hierarchy of racism, um, which would be lovely to thresh out tonight. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, that's why they booked me. Yeah. Oh. So we're here to discover who is the most racist person here. Oh. Right. And, uh, uh, are we what? doing it? Yeah, let's okay. do it. <laughs> I think we're already sitting in our racist order. I think, yeah. But <laughs> we don't know where it starts from. <laughs> she did suggest that certain types of racism should be considered racism and others should be just merely prejudice. Yeah. And that included Irish people, travellers um, and Jews. Yeah. And this is a bit of a problem for the Labour Party, the, yes. the putting the word Jews in again. Mm. Yeah. Um, your... And, yes, it was late at night and she was sending a formal letter to the Observer, so, you know, hey, we've all done it. <laughs> So many first drafts of any letter you write, there's a hell of a lot of racism in there. <laughs> yes. That's what second drafts are for. That's right. Dear Milkman, why is my milk white? <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things that have to go wrong there. One, you write a racist draft. Two, you open an email. Three, you add an attachment. Four, like, well, how is it? I don't understand how this has been an error. She did apologise for a letter. The explanation was that she has sent an initial draft. And she had obviously had a couple of initial drafts. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to say that the errors arose. It's like she didn't write them down, they just arose, like, <laughs> like mould. She just left, <laughs> she left the window open and some anti-Semitism just kind of settled <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Yeah. There was a wonderful moment where Keir Starmer had to pretend that this wasn't terrifically good news. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very, very sad that he had to sack this ghastly old friend of Jeremy's. <laughs> yes. Yes. And out she goes, goodbye. Actually, Diane Abbott has had the whip removed by Keir Starmer. Yeah, she's not yeah. been sacked. She's not been sacked. Diane Abbott's just had the whip removed. Yes, that's very different um, from Kirsten. being sacked. I'm glad no-one said she'd been sacked. She's not been sacked. No, no the whip just removed. having the whip removed. Yeah. Very, very different. Mm. It's a very sacked. simple procedure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's quite an extraordinary thing to say that redheads have been through the same thing that Jews. Mm. Can you imagine gingers wandering the desert for 40 years? <laughs> they wouldn't last 40 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> The burning bush wasn't even a bush. It was a redhead who forgot their sunscreen. <laughs> Does this answer your racist question? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bill, you've won. <laughs> yeah. Good. Keir Starmer <laughs> has kicked around to the Labour Party. Um, he decided to act swiftly for the highest of principles, um, namely there's an election soon. Uh, but what else might the swift, hard man action be a response to with zinging jibe? Well, I mean, the, the Tories have started calling him um, Softy. Yes. Sir Softy. Sir Softy. Sir Softy. Mm. Oh, that's mm. good. Yes, that's right. It's the son's joke about Keir being soft on sentencing. Yes, Sunak when... keeps coming up with it. Yes. Mm. Um, yes. As though he might have thought of it. He doesn't have the visual element that the son added, which is admittedly very funny. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Widow Twanky. <laughs> It was going to be a great day for the Tory party. Unfortunately, they had to suspend one of their MPs for suggesting that the COVID vaccine rollout had been the worst thing since the Holocaust. <laughs> Andrew Bridgen. Not a great moment uh, for either party. Um, Rishi Sunak, who did he elbow last week, metaphorically? Rob. Yes, Rob. Oh, yes. Rob was found by government inquiry to have bullied and harassed certain civil servants. The report said he was abrasive, not abusive, like a detergent. <laughs> um. He was persistently aggressive. Yeah. Uh, he undermined. 
he humiliated. Striking the table. Mm. Mm. And also that he is a black belt in karate. So, I mean, they're going through some tables there. <laughs> yeah, I am. He's just chopping through wood. Mm. According to the Telegraph, he also said someone's work was utterly useless and woeful. Is that bullying? Is that bullying? <laughs> God almighty, give us a bit of warning. <laughs> I was waiting for me the alarm to go off to tell me that was going to happen. Yeah. Got my heart rate shot through I the roof then. Oh, I'm a very physical performer. I don't think you are. Thank you. Imagine being told you really daddy... hurt. <laughs> it hurt so much. Yeah, it sounded solid. Yeah. Really, I've got no blood left in this hand, it's gone straight up into my elbow. Yeah. Imagine being told you're bad at your job by Dominic Ra. Yes. Mm. I mean, this is a guy who didn't know that Dover was important for trade. Yeah. Mm. You know? Well, I thought misogyny it was a thing that applied to both sexes. I know. <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse than a bullying thicko. <laughs> And he is the one who didn't come home from holiday during a previous mm. emergency because he thought the sea was closed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds like we're bullying him. <laughs> it did. <laughs> well, Ra's bullying involved recalling the Spanish ambassador to London for a telling off. Uh, this was the same ambassador that Jacob Rees-Mogg had called a wet wipe, <laughs> um, which is also Jacob Rees-Mogg's safe word. <laughs> Speaking of bullies, um, <laughs> Pretty Patel, what's she been up to recently? <laughs> what has she been up to? Hmm. I thought I'd put the question back to you. What has she okay, been up to? OK, well, I'll tell you. Well, yeah. she was in her constituency... Was she? Um, ..unveiling a memorial bench to four swans. <laughs> I think the memorial was for the swans rather than the swans for the audience. Um, <laughs> swans don't care about benches. <laughs> Here she is at the very sombre event. <laughs> She's read the room, Pretty. Um, <laughs> Now that Rav's gone, who's the new Deputy Prime Minister? Oh, God, it's Oliver Dowden. I'm not good at reading expressions, but even <laughs> that one I caught. <laughs> He's a former lawyer, and according to The Times, he used to specialise in terrorism, murder, <laughs> manslaughter <laughs> and serious fraud. <laughs> and finally, what's going on here? Now, this is the police protecting Rishi Sunak. <gasps> police horses retire en masse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am right, aren't I? Yeah. Yes. Rishi Sunak. Yeah. Rishi Sunak is in the middle there, and he requires the entire police force yeah. to defend him from protesters. But there's no protesters there. No. Unless they're disguised as police. <laughs> 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 right. It's actually Mrs Rishi uh, bringing her purse back from the cash point. <laughs> <laughs> this is the controversial <laughs> emergency alarm that went off at 3 o'clock last Sunday afternoon. The timing of the alarm warning us of impending national disaster has been criticised. Some say it went off a minute too early, at 2.59, <laughs> while others claim it should have gone off even earlier, last September, when Liz Truss became Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> last week, Dominic Raab quit after two complaints of bullying were upheld. Many of the bullying allegations refer to Raab's time at the Ministry of Justice which is also the name he gives to his fists. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Bill, take a look at this. Oh, yes, this is the French in France, yeah. uh, where you would expect a lot of them to be. This is a protest. They're protesting against the rise in pensionable age uh, from 62 to 64, I think. And it's a place called um, Ganges, I think, in France, where mm. they try to sort of stop people banging swordsmen together by saying that it was against the law because they were... they called them portable sound systems. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they said, you're not allowed to have a portable sound system in a yeah. public place. Yes, they're being classified as portable sound devices. They're being told to put a lid on it. That's what they're... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called a casserolade. This, the, yes. this is... Which sounds delicious. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but that's the name of banging pots and pans together, is a casserolade. It is called a casserolade. <laughs> that is one of the names. There's another name for it. Do you know what it is? Um, bing bang bong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My French isn't great. Yeah. <laughs> a, a concert de casserole. Oh, oh nice. that's very nice. Um, I like it because over in France they they bash their pots and pans in protest. Over here we do it instead of. 
paying our nurses properly. There must have been some confused NHS workers in <laughs> Paris going, oh, I appreciate it, but I'm, I'm on holiday, actually. So, <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? It's sort of stand yes. down, isn't it? Yes, this is news that the French government are trying to ban the banging of pots and pans, which were used by protesters against government pension reforms. You're completely right, Paul. After complaints of overzealous police officers confiscating saucepans, the French interior minister was forced to clarify the government's position. We are not banning kitchen utensils. <laughs> the French love a retirement because, in a way, it's, it's the strike that never ends. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. The old racism ometers really. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting a saucepan with a wooden spoon has been the French way to express disapproval since the Middle Ages, um, along with the guillotine. <laughs> um, <laughs> President Macron's pension changes have been pushed through despite huge public opposition, but what did Macron say in the Alsace region? Was, was Macron annoyed that the French couldn't just be more British? Shall we see what he actually uh, said? Mm. Well, here he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit of fun. Um, according to The Observer, he did, he did visit the village. Um, you mentioned Ganges. Uh, people took to the street with pots, saucepans, metal colanders, and a variety of spoons. One child even waves a metal flan dish. <laughs> um, that was Lorraine. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, fingers on buzzers yes, for an extremely yes. brief moment of high octane fun. Um, yes, some right. quick questions about protests around the world. Yes. Oh, good. How do people express their disapproval of politicians in Greece? They throw plates at them? No. It does involve a dairy product. They yogurt. throw yoghurt? That's right. Mm. Yes. I... It's called yogurting. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's another one of Jacob Rees-Mogg's safe words. <laughs> In Russia, they drape noodles over their ears. Over their ears? Over their ears. Where did you think? What, as a protest? <laughs> yes. All right, to drown out the yeah. scenting voices. I cannot well... hear you. I have noodles in my ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but wh why do they do this? It's an old Russian proverb. Yeah. The man with noodles over his ears is yes. going to be locked up and arrested for 20 years. Well, the first part was right. <laughs> um, but, is it uh, 30 years? Yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually used to accuse politicians of dishonesty. <laughs> um, to, to hang noodles on someone's ears is a well-known idiom in Russia that means to tell lies. Mm. Gosh, that oh. is good. In the very first recorded instance of food throwing, yeah. What was thrown at Roman governor Vespasian in 63 AD? Tomatoes. No. Artichokes. N Olives. No. no. New potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being back at the market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While governing North Africa, he was pelted with turnips. Oh. Were they whole turnips or were they cooked? It was 63 AD. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember it extremely well. <laughs> Now, that's the end of that round. Yeah. Um, yeah while the French are protesting about the retirement age going up to 64, who has absolutely no intention of retiring? Joe oh, Biden. Joe Biden. That's right, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, 80 years young. Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's confirmed this week he will be running for president. Yes. <laughs> it's well, always um, funny when he says that, isn't yes. it? Yes. Because he won't be walking. No. <laughs> and then he says he's going to stand, and you think, mm, not even that. <laughs> <laughs> The slogan on the announcement video was, let's finish this. And I was like... Can he finish this? Can he...? I mean, he's, he's so old, Jill puts coins on his eyes every night, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see his official launch promo? Yeah. Mm. Freedom. Personal freedom is fundamental to who we are as Americans. There's nothing more important, nothing more sacred. That's been the work of my first term, to fight for our democracy. This shouldn't be a red or blue issue. That's not even slow motion, that's oh. how. <laughs> <laughs> that's speeded up. Yeah. Well, he'll be 86 at the end of a second term. It does seem strange that the most powerful country in the world can only find a very, very old man and a man who's going to be in jail <laughs> to run against each other. Only 5% of Americans want to see a Biden-Trump face-off. Is he too old for sure? I mean, Mary Berry's 88, lest we forget. This is true. I'm saying 
Are you saying that she's not is she, fighting is she, condition? Is she running for president? She is now. <laughs> Let's have a look at her video. Yeah. <laughs> it's not working. Yeah, I know. Now... Oh, I thought we were going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Which well-known figures are keeping themselves in very good trim? Who's looking hot, do you mean? Yeah, we're going to have a look. Is that, is that AI generated? Yes, it is. Oh. Well, you've got metal nipples. <laughs> well, you ought to ask yourself, Paul, because it's you. <laughs> that... <laughs> that... <laughs> yeah? You want to get a metal detector around those sharpish. Mm. It's an AI-created image of what people would look like at the peak of physical fitness, and that's you, Paul, at your physical peak of fitness. <laughs> As imagined by, <laughs> by AI. I'm speaking to my lawyer about this. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, do you want to get ready, Ian? <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> that expression tells a story, but I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> they haven't done me, cos it, it'd just be the same. <laughs> so what was the point of that? <laughs> it's news! <laughs> Apart from humiliating the only two people who are keeping this show on the road. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> I think that was the point. Yeah. <laughs> this refers to the demonstrations in France over pensions reform. According to one historian, the French have a long history of banging pots and pans as a protest against violent repression. Mixed results um, wasn't quite enough to keep the Nazis out of Paris. <laughs> <laughs> it's a topical show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a mock-up of Hitler with no shirt on it. <laughs> In other news, Joe Biden has announced he will stand again in 2024. Launching his bid to be re-elected as president, Joe Biden announced a minimum tax rate for the very wealthy, saying no billionaire should be paying less tax than a construction worker or a cop, or any of the village people, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> 1980s pop group, my lad. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Donald Trump this week told his supporters, Joe Biden is the most corrupt president <laughs> in American history. Donald, you are far too modest. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, the strengthometer of news. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. This is... A rusty pole in Exmouth. It was removed mysteriously. No one knows where it went. No yeah. one knows who took it. Yeah. And uh, locals are furious. They're furious. It stood on an Exmouth nature reserve since 1909 and, according to ITV News, has been catapulted to legendary status. <laughs> uh, let's have another look at the pole. <laughs> <laughs> on TripAdvisor, there is a suggested visiting duration of one to two hours. <laughs> Um, it's 119 years old. It's actually just announced it's running for president. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's been most vocal about its removal? There's an appreciation society. The Exmouth Rusty Pole Society oh. has been up in arms. Co-founder Robin Trigger Glover told reporters it's devastating. I remember turning to my partner and saying, I can't believe it's gone. <laughs> Adding... I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Farage is thrilled, of course. He loves it when a pole gets removed. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make up for the previous...? Uh... Yeah. OK. That's nice. Society member Mike Menhennet is devastated as well. Here he is. I remember it from my childhood here in the 1950s, playing here with it. Um, and it's such a shame. Why has it gone? It's a landmark. Perhaps South West Water were not aware of the importance of this pole to the people of the town. Um, it has been here since 1909, when the council uh, decided that they ought to have some vent pipes. <laughs> so we would like it reinstated, please. <laughs> Why is he pretending to be a vicar? <laughs> but according to the Daily Mail, it got a number of very positive reviews, with one visitor writing, so many rusty poles have been ruined by gentrification. 
but this remains as a rare and traditional <laughs> seaside <laughs> attraction. Um, I don't know if any of you have read um, the famous five visiting Rusty Pole. <laughs> um, what have locals done as a tribute? Have they laid flowers in its place? Should we take a look? Yes. Well, the group would love to see the pole reinstated, but they have found a piece of concrete, at least, which they believe was left behind <laughs> and maybe a suitable base for a plaque in memory of the rusty pole. <laughs> Does it say rust in peace? <laughs> And this isn't the first time we've featured a famous poll on the show. Isn't it? No. Can anyone remember the I'm all one? agog. <laughs> yeah. Cast your mind back to the 500th episode. When we covered... Hang on. I've only got back to 602. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, I'm there. OK. We covered the mystery of the Gloucester Docks Bents poll. <laughs> Here it is. Not only did we do that story once... <laughs> <laughs> right. We've now, as a kind of greatest hits of yeah. polls, we've freezed the whole item. Well, we'll make fun of it, but I do now kind of want to know why. Yes, of course you yeah. do. To find out what's happened since we got in touch with Gloucestershire Live reporter Kim Horton, who normally covers Matson, Tuffley, Podsmead and Quedgley. That's a firmer solicitor's for you. <laughs> we've got the world exclusive that the poll has been replaced. <laughs> and finally, what did this dog find for its owner on a beach in Wales? Oh, yes, this was a heartwarming story. Uh, there was a woman who owned this dog and she needed a kidney uh, transplant and the dog kept running over to another visitor on the beach and she kept calling the dog back and the dog kept going back to this other woman on the beach and eventually got talking and uh, the woman who owned the dog mentioned she was on dialysis and the other woman said, oh, I I've, I've recently sort of enlisted for a kidney donor uh, programme and it turns out that the uh, woman gave the other woman a kidney and it was a 22 million to one chance it would be a perfect match and it was. That's the exact story. Yes. Right. That's it. So that's a very clever dog, and if he was in the same story as the pole, I'm sure I know what he would do. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Rusty Sue event pole in Exmouth that isn't there anymore. According to one newspaper, the pole leans slightly to the right. But that's Devon for you. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Prince Harry revealed that Prince William had, in recent times, been paid a lot of money by Rupert Murdoch's News International for publishing uh, stories about him that had been bugging his phone. So that's, that's what it's about. Harry claims in 2020 um, his own case against Murdoch was delayed when Murdoch's news group, in order to settle his phone hacking claim out of court, secretly paid William a very large sum of money. According to the Times, the aim of this was to avoid the reputational damage of a member of the royal family having to sit in the witness box giving details of private voicemails, uh, just like Charles had suffered when that phone call to Camilla was leaked by the Sun in 1993. So... Ah, the affair of Tampax Britannica. Mm. That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. As so, it was never called. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, possibly the king might not be entirely pleased with this recent Tesco promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Period drama. Is that no. right? <laughs> what other major claim did Prince Harry make in his witness statement? He said there was a secret agreement with News Corporation. Yeah. And then he was asked whether there was any evidence for this, and he couldn't quite remember who'd said it. And then the judge got a bit annoyed because Harry said, um, I had no idea there was any phone hacking going on. And then yesterday he said, Well, I did know it was going on, but there was a secret agreement. So the judge said, well, which of those two statements is the truth? And Harry said, it's my truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did... Has he walked in just then? Did he walk in? <laughs> what other event falls on the same day as the King's coronation? The FA Cup final. No. No. There is another very important event that we're, we're, we're frankly ignoring. Mm. It's World Naked Gardening Day. <laughs> So, a uh, very Well, maybe awkward... King Charles will combine the two. Yes. <laughs> Nudist Stuart Hayward of Derbyshire told the Mirror that he'll be watching the coronation naked, um, <laughs> hopefully in the garden. Here he is. <laughs>
I think he's asked for the black box to be that big. <laughs> <laughs> That photo was taken in a very strong wind, so they had to cover both options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not symmetrical, is it? No, no, it was, it was this way and that way. <laughs> <laughs> How have a team of chocolatiers honoured King Charles? Oh, they've created a bust of Charles. They have. Here it is. <laughs> the sculpture was crafted from 2,875 celebrations which is far higher than the number expected across the weekend. <laughs> this is the latest instalment of the phone hacking scandal. As part of the coronation preparations, a bust of King Charles has been made out of 17 litres of melted chocolate. Although, when this was first suggested, one unnamed member of the royal family was concerned how dark it would be. <laughs> 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 Meghan Markle has revealed that, despite speculation, the real reason she is not coming to the coronation is that she is having a birthday party for her four-year-old son, and having been to many children's parties, that will be the real reason why Harry is agreeing to come to the coronation. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round, just one between you this week. Your four are Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Boris Johnson and car parks. Oh, I don't know where to begin with this. Um, maybe if you think of what happened to Elon Musk recently. So his, his rocket week. exploded That's on right. launch. It happens to all of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it a computing malfunction? Is this a, a... Well, you're in the right area. It's, they've all had problems with technology, no. apart from car parks, which will have problems with technology in the future. What, how, do they, how do we know that? Well... <laughs> Why don't we do something about it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with driverless cars or electric cars? Or it is to do with electric cars. They're heavier. They're heavier. Mm. Cars and are what heavier. what does that mean? Oh, it no. means that... They're going to fall through the multi-storey car. Yes. yes. According to research, <laughs> multi-storey car park... There's actual murmurs in the audience. <laughs> yeah. According to research, multi-storey car parks will struggle with the increased number of electric cars on the road because they're much heavier than their fossil fuel burning counterparts. That is, according to lead scientist Chris Wapples. <laughs> um, Mr Wapples confirms that there is definitely the potential for some of the early car parks in poor condition to collapse, but I don't want to set off alarm bells. <laughs> Stop touching cars, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick with parking. Why? Can we change the title of this programme, <laughs> Who Gives a Fuck? <laughs> Every car park in the world is on the brink of collapse. <laughs> and there you are in your bubble. Yeah. <laughs> While Teslas fall from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Why might a car park in China not live up to some driver's expectations? Because it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> I'm pretending. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I've been here 33 years, how do you think I feel? <laughs> I don't know. If I had empathy, I'd give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> An English teacher... Yeah. ..based in the Hanzhou district... Yeah. ..of Yangzhou... Yeah. yeah. You know that district. Yeah, absolutely. ..spotted this sign leading to a car park, which offered emergency parking. <laughs> OK? And you claim you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> emergency parking, it's a sign directing you to Liz Truss, who's doing a trade deal. <laughs> <laughs> now... What technology challenges has Boris Johnson faced? He shouldn't have any challenges. He spent all of that money on Jennifer Akori, didn't he? <laughs> he yeah, he took be, IT he lessons. He should be an expert now. During his COVID isolation, tough times for Boris, mm -hmm. the former Prime Minister kept accidentally disconnecting from Zoom and had no idea how to rejoin. <laughs> Therefore, his aides would set up four iPads <laughs> so that once he had broken the first, he could grab the second, <laughs> then the third, then the fourth. Also, his relationship strategy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who knows what word uh, Boris started using a lot during lockdown? The C word. Yes. He started to frequently use, according to the Times, the C word. Yes. According to the report, Johnson used it around his colleagues Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane because it's what he thought working class people did. <laughs> It went on to point out that although Kane is working class, Cummings isn't, but he does come from the North East. <laughs> <laughs> which was working class enough for Boris. <laughs> what problems has Elon Musk had this week? Uh, well, Phil mentioned his rocket blowing up. Yes. Let's have a look at the moment it all went wrong. 
It does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. Cheering. They're in a cult. <laughs> um, well, SpaceX did their very best to own the situation, with a spokesperson describing the explosion as a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. <laughs> How has Donald Trump shown he's not great with technology this week? His Truth Social? His, yes. His own personal social media? Yes. His own social media channel, which is Truth Social, um, that he set up after being banned from Twitter, has made the former president less than $201. <laughs> One of Donald Trump's most popular fundraising vehicles is registered as Donald J. Trump for President, Inc. Inc. presumably standing for incarcerated. <laughs> <laughs> They've all had problems with technology, apart from car parks, which will have problems with technology in the future. When Boris Johnson was in isolation with COVID, staff stopped him leaving his office by creating a Prime Ministerial Puppy Gate Barrier. <laughs> this was essential not only to prevent him spreading the virus, but also to stop him humping the furniture. <laughs> Despite Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket exploding shortly after takeoff, engineers declared it a success as a firework. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, NASA Chat, the newsletter for amphibian and reptile enthusiasts. We start with Mars Rover, what after losing what? Mars Rover, too far away to care what's happening on Earth after losing will to live. <laughs> <laughs> and I know how it feels. Yeah. <laughs> Mars Rover yeah. is lonely. Oh, That's no, it's not lonely. Mars Rover is lonely. And he hasn't got a pet rock. <laughs> it's on Mars, it's a rocky planet, get another one. <laughs> Rover does have a pet rock and it is lonely. That's a headline. What happened to the pet rock? Did it die? <laughs> <laughs> have a look. This is new to the Mars Rover has lost its unexpected travelling companion. A <laughs> small rock. <laughs> that... This isn't news. <laughs> Don't Scott, you're talking about pain here, Paul. I am. This pain, is... pain millions of miles away on a dead planet. Yeah. I know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> show should be beamed directly to Mars. We'll find an appreciative audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's not getting the ratings on Mars. No. It won't be getting the ratings down here much longer. <laughs> Here's the rock. Oh. No, no, it's made that noise. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see. It's a rock on Mars. Admit it, Paul. Now that you've seen it, you're actually moved. No, he isn't. <laughs> you're moved. I didn't realise the relationship was that close. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Next, fortune-telling goat, what? Heavily biased towards Capricorns. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, it says, the fortune-telling goat, says Starmer won't win the general election. Oh. It, it really says... Does. Yes. <laughs> the goat said... That's right. Starmer won't win the next general election. <laughs> this is Billy the psychic goat. Yes. Here's Billy in action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Answering the question, has there been much news around this week? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Next, Blackpool Zoo asked staff to what by dressing up as what? Blackpool Zoo asks staff to help cut costs by dressing up as zoo animals. <laughs> Blackpool Zoo asked staff to placate penguins by dressing up as nuns. <laughs> no, Blackpools who are staff duplicate nuns by dressing up as penguins. <laughs> it's one or the other. Well, you're, you're kind of close. I can't be. Blackpools who are staff to scare away seagulls <laughs> by dressing up as an eagle. <laughs> um, here's an example of the outfit that staff will be wearing. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah? I don't know what he's going to do to seagulls. It frightens the life out of me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what the Archbishop's wearing at the coronation. Yeah. <laughs> Next, new exhibition in France will only allow visitors if they... Uh, take the shoes off. It's, mm. it's to do with taking stuff off. Trousers. Go on. Oh. If they Pants. strip... Yeah, are naked. Mm. If they are naked. New oh. exhibition in France will only allow visitors if they are naked. Tickets to the event cost €11, Euros, though good luck finding somewhere to put your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Next, 
pet parrots feel less lonely when they... Not on their own. That is part of it. Yeah. When they ask another parrot if they would like a cracker. <laughs> pet parrots feel less lonely when they video call each other. <laughs> um, and they can use Zoom better than Boris Johnson. <laughs> yeah, they can, but they prefer Twitter. <laughs> Please. Next, if you really want to capture the unique dorsal wart pattern of a natterjack toad, then what? You gotta get with my friend. <laughs> 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 then, oh, get, get a life. You really need to get a life. <laughs> if you really want to capture, and it doesn't sound like you really do. No, I don't. <laughs> if you really want to capture the unique dorsal wart pattern on a natterjack toad, then photograph it while sitting on a washing up sponge. It's unclear whether you should be on the sponge <laughs> or whether the toe should be on the sponge. Oh, I think you've got to be sitting on the sponge <laughs> to give the activity a bit of interest. Finally. Yeah, finally. Yes. Yeah. What, what and what found in back of car near Glasgow? S&P accountant, Nicola Sturgeon and bags of cash. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely true. Yeah. Oh, Mars Rover and Rock. <laughs> Reunited. Reunited in trip to Earth, found in back of car near Glasgow. <laughs> the answer is yeah. a lamb, drugs and a bag of chips found <laughs> in back of car near Glasgow. Here's what the police found in the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> He's coked up his eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and Marina have four, Paul and Phil. Also have four. Hey. Mm. Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Ku Klux Klan instigate economy drive. <laughs> 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 and here's a bonus one. Can you tell me the best way to cock fosters? <laughs> you going to the arsenal? <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Marina Perkis, Paul Merton and Phil Wang, and I leave you with news that, in Peterborough, there's a slight overreaction to the local council changing its blue-lid recycling bin day from Tuesdays to Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> ah. An awkward moment at a holiday resort as two guests are forced to make small talk after recognising each other from work. <laughs> And at a maternity ward in Hartlepool, an urgent investigation is launched after a baby tries to climb back inside its mother. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>